Okay. All right. So, anti-inflammatories. I uh, talked about different things previously, the whole schematic of where things work you need to know. Talked about mast cell inhibitors we don't use a lot. Talked about antihistamines. Use a lot of omega-3 even though they're nutraceuticals. Um, talked about lipoxygenase inhibitors. Again, we don't use them. Um, GAGS, which stands for glycosaminoglycan, sometimes called polysulfated glycosaminoglycans or PSGAGs. Uh, the main one is chondroitin sulfate. You will use a lot of this, okay? Uh, oftentimes combined with glucosamine uh, in the oral form. So that would be things like cosequin, dasequin, uh, osteobiflex, you name it. There are a ton of these nutraceuticals out aimed at joint uh, health. But it's primarily the gag in them, the chondroitin sulfate, that we believe is doing the, the vast majority of the good. Now, <clears throat> there are several injectables out there. Uh, they don't have the glucosamine in them, it's just a uh, gag. Adequan is probably the one you know uh, the best, approved for horses and for dogs as an injectable. All right. So the idea behind these is that they supply building blocks for cartilage and they may inhibit proteases. Now this may inhibit, the, the evidence is not overwhelming and that's why on that little chart that this little double line is a little different color than the red line. Uh, that they can be beneficial is good, we're just not sure whether they're truly anti-inflammatories. You'll uh, hear them sometimes referred to as slow um, modifiers of disease. And that makes a point that these do have a slow onset, okay? Typically requires several weeks, okay? Now, I'll give you my bias. If you look at the clinical trials, the literature on nutraceuticals, uh, it's not that overwhelmingly positive. It is positive overall, uh, <clears throat> but it's not anywhere close to what you get with the injectables in terms of proven efficacy. Now, when you go down in clinics, particularly when you're in small animal surgery, nearly every case that leaves that has a joint injury, you'll put on some sort of oral gag, and that's because they're very safe. My personal view is they help some animals, but not all animals, okay? I think <coughs> that the injectables have higher efficacy in my mind. So if I truly want a benefit, if the owner is willing to come back periodically for injections of Adequan, I think uh, there's a better benefit to that over the oral products, okay? Typically, it's a weekly injection for the first month, and then we string it out every two and then once a month uh, sort of injections. But I've had good uh, success, pretty good success, with uh, Adequan injections. I don't have a problem people using the oral gags because they are so safe, they won't do any harm. Uh, it's the, again, the evidence is just not that overwhelmingly positive. They, they seem to help, but yes, question? Is it like an injection into the joint or is it okay? Good question. Is it an injection to, into the joint or the muscle? It's both. Okay. The product was originally approved in horses to directly inject into the joint. And there are some uh, gags out there, hyaluronic acid concentrates, this sort of thing, still available for horses to inject directly into the joint. But they, uh, they showed that IM injection still delivers a substantial amount of the gag to uh, the joint itself. How much goes orally, again, that's kind of, we're not sure. Okay, good question though. So you can do both. In small animals, definitely we use the IM injection. It's kind of hard to hit joints in small animals comparatively. You can do either, I think in large animals, equine can tell you, but I think they go more with the actual injection into the joints. Okay, this is an oldie but a goodie. 
dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO. Uh, it's, it's a solvent, actually, or at least that's a, uh, how it was initially used, uh, an industrial solvent. And it, it dissolves a lot of things, uh, both polar and nonpolar compounds. A lot of things can be dissolved in DMSO. Uh, <coughs> so you've seen it mixed with a whole variety of compounds uh, of dubious efficacy. It's hygroscopic. Uh, which means it attracts water so you don't leave the, the, the uh, cap off the bottle. I had one student that um, was saying uh, he left the cap off the bottle and, and his um, preceptor just got all over him because he said he had ruined the, the DMSO because the volume actually increases from the uh, absorbed water so it gets more and more dilute. Uh, when you do mix it with water, it, it's exothermic, so you can expect it to warm from that. Uh, that occurs with the skin. If you apply it to your skin, there's a warming sensation. Next slide, I'll talk about intravenous use where we dilute it in fluids, and there you definitely get a, a, a mild exothermic reaction. It does rapidly penetrate the intact skin and uh, regardless of whether that's skin or otherwise, the anti-inflammatory effect is thought to be due to scavenging free radicals. Remember I said that when we get damaged tissue, particularly the white cells, but also other tissues that are dying, they release free radicals. The hydroxyl radical, the superoxide radical that are going to damage membranes, and these more or less bind to, to it and neutralize. Um, the free radical. Remarkably non-toxic. Uh, <coughs> uh, people will say, well, it, it'll cause cataracts because uh, there were some lens changes in uh, one study. This was over nine weeks where they gave daily huge doses. Our normal dose IV uh, in horses is like a half to one gram per kilogram. They were given like, I forget, six grams a day for nine weeks uh, before they saw these. So the type of uses we have, which are typically short term, I'm not really concerned about it. It's one of those things that's on the label, but short term use, I, I, I don't mind. Um, a couple of things, uh, because it, it will carry some drugs in the, across the skin, you want the skin fairly clean before you apply it. You don't want other chemicals on, uh, on the skin you're going to apply. Actually, uh, part of the way they realized this was this was being used as a solvent in the organophosphate industry chemical company, and they had workers coming down with organophosphate poisoning. And what they finally figured out was they were getting minute traces of the organophosphate dust on their skin and handling the DMSO, and the DMSO was causing the organophosphate to be absorbed. Uh, <clears throat> now that sounds like, oh, that's great, you could uh, put any drug you want on the skin in DMSO and you'd have an instant absorption of transdermal. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. There's some very specific limitations as far as molecular size, solubility, um, <clears throat> that sort of thing. But uh, I do recommend that you, it be free of pesticides, anything innocuous. Luckily, the Toxins, endotoxin, most of the exotoxins from bacteria are so large they will not penetrate even with DMSO from the intact skin. Now, from a wound, they probably would, all right, but intact skin like a pyoderma, probably not, okay. What's the one drawback? It stinks. Uh, this came up the other day. DMSO itself doesn't smell or very, very mildly, but it's rapidly metabolized to dimethyl sulfone. Uh, and it is very volatile. So it goes out the lung just like an anesthetic gas would. And it has uh, a very unique odor and taste to it. Um, it's been called rotten eggs, oysters. You'll know it when you, you do it. Uh, you'll smell it down in the clinic uh, occasionally on the equine side. Uh, again, they'll use this. Uh, IV, 
uh, and uh, different individuals seem to be, have different predilections. I don't know why, but some people, you know, can wash their hands in it and not have a problem. They never taste it. Others, you know, you can you get a drop on your skin and, and uh, you'll taste it for hours, it seems like. So it's one of those things. I, I really like it topically, um, but let's talk about uses. All right, so it's an approved drug. Uh, it's a 90% gel and liquid uh, for use in dogs and horses. Now, um, just kind of FYI, they make a 70% solution for use in humans for women with interstitial cystitis. Interstitial cystitis is an unknown etiology, but this is one of the few drugs that may actually have a benefit where they'll infuse the drug uh, into the bladder uh, of these women and provide some relief. Uh, I, I know one horror story, remember I said bacterial toxins don't cross intact skin, but they may other tissues. Had one uh, horror story where a vet had a, a chronic UTI, he thought he'd clear up by mixing antibiotic and DMSO and putting it in the bladder. The problem was the antibiotic killed all the bacteria, all the endotoxin was absorbed across the uh, bladder wall from the DMSO and the dog died shortly of endotoxic shock. Okay, so um, the rest of the tissues are not the skin in terms of a barrier. Now, uh, a lot of people, because it's cheaper and more available, will get the chemical grade DMSO. It tends to be 99% DMSO instead of 90%, so you need to pay attention to that. And here, make sure you, you pick a reputable chemical company. Um, I can't say how definitive, but I've heard horror stories of, of trace contaminants in DMSO causing illness. So pick a, a reputable chemical company, you know. If you get it off eBay from China, I probably would think twice about uh, using it. <clears throat> I like this label indication, reduce acute swelling due to trauma. I think this is where it really has a, uh, uh, a, a good benefit. Uh, I say that, <laughs> I'll diverge into a story. We used to have a sedation lab in various species, including cattle, and uh, we had sedated this, uh, this steer with xylazine, and someone, it, was, it involved a physical restraint, and I was showing anyway where to do a paracentesis, an abdominocentesis, and I touched the calf's uh, underside and he promptly kicked me right there. Uh, and I'm, if we'd, luckily there were no cell phones in those days because I'm sure it would have been all over YouTube. Uh, uh, but I had this huge bruise on the inside of my thigh and it was kind of interesting because it started to thrombose in there and so I painted half of it with DMSO uh, and that faded pretty quickly versus the other half, so I did a control trial of one. <laughs> <laughs> but I really like it in acute injuries. I don't think it helps that much in chronic injuries. You'll, um, not so much more, they're better things, but at one time you'd, you'd have uh, customers, <coughs> owners come in and, and they wanted some DMSO for their own arthritis, which you weren't supposed to do to start with, but it doesn't really help much with chronic uh, inflammation or disease. You'll see it oftentimes um, added when you get an accidental uh, extravasation outside the vein of like a chemotherapy agent or amphotericin or something. Um, we don't know why it seems to be benefit. This is all extra label, but it's very common to apply DMSO to that area. It, it may enhance the absorption out of the area. That's a possibility. Scavenge free radicals, that, that's also a possibility, but it improves blood flow too. Uh, not used for this, but they did a, a really interesting study in small animals where they, uh, when they do a um, pedicle skin graft, there's a certain ratio of how long it can be versus how um, the base, how narrow the skin flap can be, and there's a certain ratio you don't want to exceed. And they found out if they treated the skin flap with DMSO, they could extend that ratio, make it longer, about 50%. Uh, <clears throat> so it, it actually seems to have a, a, a benefit in terms of blood flow. So that's part of the reasons, several reasons why you'll see that commonly done. 
mild inhibition of platelets. I wouldn't use it in, in an animal with a platelet clotting factor. It's usually of no consequence. The only thing I can mention is that it, uh, when I use it in an acute trauma, I wait until after the, the bleeding is done. Uh, and I don't use it in an active bleeding. Again, these short stories, uh, I had a uh, professor, he was a um, bovine surgeon, he was talking about it and he hit his thumb with a hammer and he immediately went and stuck it in a bottle of BMSO and he said it, it felt great, you know, less pain immediately, but his whole hand bruised like up till there because probably from the antiplatelet effect it didn't uh, coagulate as fast. Okay. Now, I'm not recommending you do any of these things. <laughs> I, I did it okay, yes, but you should not do this. Okay. And as, as I mentioned, it can carry a lot of small molecules. Uh, um, now we use other things for transdermals, but it's something you need to be aware of in terms of, again, pesticides, this sort of thing. Yes. Um, so that makes it short for you to use it all the time in the block compact. Have you heard of that? To, to dissolve the, clo the, the, the plug or to wash the bladder or in wash the bladder with it? Like I should put a catheter in and then wash the bladder It's an interesting uh, idea of, of washing the bladder of a block tom. Um, no data whatsoever. Uh, but. Um, Given that it solubilizes so many things, there's a chance that perhaps it might solubilize some crystals, that sort of thing. Standardly, we flush them with saline back and forth. Would the DMSO do more? Who knows? Uh, just make sure they don't have a UTI or you'll wind up in the same <laughs> position as the, the story I told you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> extra labely, uh, you'll see it used intravenously. It's been used in all species for this. At one time, it was a very common treatment for spinal cord injuries in dogs. Now you see it mostly in horses. Again, though, for CNS, spinal cord injuries, brain injuries, this sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it not only scavenges free radicals, but when we dilute it, we, we cut it down to uh, no greater than a 20% solution. If you go higher than that, you run into two problems. One, you're going to get hum some hemolysis, and even at 20%, you may see some hemolysis. How will you know you have hemolysis? Probably you'll see a little discoloration of the urine from the hemoglobin going out into the urine. That's not uncommon, but the big reason is if you uh, don't dilute it and or you give it really, really fast, you can get a nonspecific histamine release. So it's a concentration dependent histamine release. So you give it normally, no problem. You give it high concentration or really fast, you'll vasodilate and the horse will collapse. So you want to make sure it's diluted. Remember all those things I made you do with DMSO, diluting it? 90% down with Pearson Square. Yeah, you hated that, I know. <laughs> All right, but you do use it, okay? All right. <clears throat> but the other thing, even at 20%, it's still really hypertonic. So one of my hypotheses is that some of the benefit may not be just due to anti-inflammatory effects, but perhaps at reducing some edema, uh, kind of like giving IV mannitol. Now, what I get asked about, and just so you'll know, uh, there's uh, methyl uh, methane MSM trait, uh, our name commonly used. It's a metabolite of DMSO, thought to have a similar action, but it doesn't have the uh, objectional breath odor. All right, it's been given primarily orally as a dietary supplement. It's shown some promise, but not clear cut again. I wouldn't expect it to totally because, again, DMSO doesn't, in my mind, help DJD that much. But you'll find this incorporated into a variety of supplements, even at Walmart. I've looked in, and along with the glucosamine chondroitin, they'll have MSM uh, in it. I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. Uh, I'm not convinced it, it helps a whole lot. But it, again, it seems relatively safe. <clears throat> 